Muy buenas tardes, mi raza. Today is Sunday, October the 1st, 2023. I want to give out my saludos, first of all, to my mom. Hi, mom. And to the crew. We did record the week prior, but I just have so many issues with my phone. I'm actually still trying to download the videos. Rock ended up being the camera guy. He ended up recording with his phone. So I'm trying to download those clips like over here on my side so I can be able to edit and put it out there. So please just bear with me. I am working on it. It will be out soon. That was our intro to the spooky season that is now Among Us. With spooky season Among Us, I want to give a big saludo to my comadre Stephanie. Today is her happy birthday. So happy birthday. <laughs> um, I love you, comadre. You know that with the bottom of my heart. I am so glad we are very close. You are a wonderful and amazing person. I can literally depend on her for anything. Depend on you for anything. So thank you for your friendship, comadre. I love you so much. And I do hope that this new year, age, whatever... Brings you the best of everything. I know I sent you a message earlier, but here is your official happy birthday from me to you. Ooh. También un saludo a my good friend Gus. Hello. He watches me here and there, so why not say hello? Um, oh, and then especially because this, this episode that I'm going to be talking about, I was thinking about you the whole time. It's like union workers, this and that. So I will get into the story. Uh, but like I said, here, today is Sunday. I usually don't record Sundays ever because, yeah, like it's Sunday. But I am going to be covering a story of an anniversary that happened today 113 years ago. So that's why I decided to sit down and make this video today. So we can talk about it because I didn't know about it. So I want you guys to discover the same information I did because I was like, I'm here in my house, so you guys already know background noises are very, very common here, and I apologize. But let's get on with this episode. Um, like I mentioned, yes, it was 113 years ago today on this date. So it was the early morning of Saturday, October 1st, 1910. Okay, so what happened? Why am I bringing up this date? I les va, okay? Um, back then, the whole union, organization, laborers, this and that, era un desmadre. You know, it always has been, even now we sit here and argue who's getting paid what wage, this and this, this and that. Okay, so there, that's part of the reason for this whole situation that happened. And this is what happened. There was a suitcase left in the alley the night prior, which was September 30th. And it had 16 sticks of dynamite. And it was on timer to go off at 1 a.m. in between the Los Angeles Times building and Time Annex, which was literally buttered up against each other. So, you know, the suitcase is just randomly left there. Next to some very flammable ink barrels. Okay. All right. This LA Times building was fairly new. It had opened back on July 1st, 1886. It was a European style six story building. At that time, it took $25,000 to build. So yes, this was a very luxurious building. It no parecía a newspaper mill. It was more like a castle. That's what it looked like. Okay, so this suitcase is left there. 16 sticks of dynamite. It blows up at 1 o'clock in the morning, October 1st, 1910. In the building, there was a full staff of employees, workers, whatever you want to call them, printing papers, this and this, this and that. 
Well, this balm didn't do the whole job. It didn't blow. It wasn't enough to blow up the six-story building, but it completely blew up a wall, which was on Broadway. Because this, this LA Time building used to be located on First Street and Broadway in downtown Los Angeles. The wall on Broadway completely blew out. There was glass everywhere. There was fire everywhere. The, you know, pieces of rubble everywhere. Gente flying everywhere. Body parts flying everywhere. Sorry for the gruesome picture, but that was the truth. It was reality. That's what was going on. Okay, up to now, present year 2023. They are not sure how many people were killed. Some say 20, some say 25, some say up to 26. But the amount that was actually recovered and identified was 17 bodies for sure. Like I said, they were identified so they know who exactly they were. And it was only 17. At that time, the owner of Los Angeles Times was a man by the name of General Harrison Otis. And he had help with his son-in-law. So they were both the ones in charge of the newspaper. They were running this. Okay, we go back to the whole union talk. The state of California was divided by two at that time. San Francisco was so for the unions. They wanted everything organized. They wanted fair pay for everybody. This and this and that. Then you come down here towards, you know, SoCal. And it wasn't like that. Mr. Harrison, for one, was one of the people, you know, that didn't want to be part of the union. He wanted free work. He wanted this and that. He wanted people to just be accountable for themselves and who cares, whatever, whatever. So there was a big old stink going on between North, Northern California, Southern California, and the whole union laws in between with people that were for it, against it. Like I said, era un desmadre. Okay, going back to this bomb, there was the dead that were 26 people. And there was over 100 people that were severely injured. So como quien dice, literally every person that was working that shift got some kind of Injury due to this bombing. Okay, so now we move forward a little bit. And there was two brothers that were very, very known in that era. They were Irish American. One was known as John Jay. The other one was known as James Barnabas. And their last name was Nanaram. Okay, so these two brothers, okay, initials JB brother was actually the treasurer for the iron workers union the other brother so he was you know whatever he had a job this and that but they were very very for the union they wanted the union to be picked up everywhere so they were actually behind many bombings in the entire u.s because once again these people are trying to push the union for every worker within the United States. Okay, they were behind this bombing as well. The brother, JJ, was the one who actually planted this suitcase and waited for it to light up. Okay, going back to the point where it was 16 sticks of dynamite and it wasn't enough to blow up the building I guess there had been reports within the building and the workers 
telling Mr. Otis that it smelled like gas in there. So the investigators are sitting here putting two and two together. Cuando explotó la dinamita con el gas, it combined and it made that, you know, big explosion. And that's what actually helped the walls fall and the glass shatter and the people fly out. So it was a big combination of the gas and the dynamite that ignited the whole thing. Okay, so now talking about Captain um, Otis or Harrison, however you want to refer to him. He was a big time conservative. So like I mentioned, he wasn't with the union. No quería el nada de eso. He was actually very good friends with a lot of people here in Los Angeles that were against the whole union act as well. So when there was strikes and there was people picketing and this and that, you know, they had very big bail amounts because they would get arrested. If you were picketing, they would either beat you up, very bad, by the way, and they would just take you to jail. And like I said, the bail was set so high because they wanted everybody to... Yes, tuvo. Don't talk about it. Shut up. We're not doing that. So the Iron Workers Union were blaming this man because he had such power within Los Angeles that he was one of the reasons that the union wasn't getting any backup here in Los Angeles, the whole union act. So that's why they decided to attack him where it would hurt the most at his place of business. Mr. Otis had purchased this LA Times a few years back when there was only a total of 500 newspapers that were in circulation, period. That was it. So he actually took the Los Angeles Times, made it a huge success because who doesn't know here in California what Los Angeles Times is. For my people that are watching me that are out of the state, out of this area, it is the longest running newspaper that we have had here in Los Angeles, the oldest. So yeah, he bought this company when it was only 500 imprints to make and he literally brought it from the ground up to what obviously it became and we know of as today okay so when this whole event happened quedó ya todo en desmadre the firefighters came put out fires this and that people were sh shipped out to hospitals for um obviously wounds and you know they needed help they ended up hiring a gentleman by the name of william burns If you guys ever notice buildings or businesses that have the little plaque posted in the front that says um, Burns Guards, he became an alarm system kind of thing. So it's like all security and this and that. Well, he was the lead FBI man of the moment. He was um, top investigator. So he was the one that was hired by the city of Los Angeles to take on this case and figure out who were the bombers. I, of course, already told you it was the J.J. Brothers. So he eventually looked into it and he did discover that it was them. We already know how you guys go about things. It's the same, like, operation that you guys do every time with the bombs. That's why they were both arrested on suspicion of the bombing. So, yeah, it was just one of those, no, I didn't. Everybody saying, yes, you did. Okay, whatever. Now, the president of the union workers, Frank Ryan, ended up reaching out to, I think, Idaho or so. It was a different state. I'm, I'm, I apologize. I'm not quite sure where. But he wanted the best of the best, which was a defense attorney for the unionists. That man's name was Clarence Darrow. Este señor era un perro. Like, nobody wanted to deal with him in court. He was the wow. Like, 
no, I'm not going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this guy. Well, at first, Clarence didn't want to pick up the case because, one, he was older and sick, and two, he was completely not interested in representing this whole bombing because a lot of people died, a lot of people were hurt, so he's like, nah, I'm not interested. Pero, like the saying says, con dinero baila el perro, they gave him a $50,000 retaining fee up front. So he said, hey, I'm coming to L.A. Packed his stuff, came down to L.A., started the whole trial, represented the J.J. brothers, and it was just one of those things, back and forth, back and forth. All the um, elections were going on for new mayors and this and that, and you guys already know how politics are. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Let's forget about this. Let's not talk about that. So there was a whole lot of that that was actually going down while the J.J. brothers were doing their whole, you know, court and, you know, this and that. It was just a scary time, a nervous time. It was just, yeah, it was not good. Now we have the president of Federation Labor. Este señor se llamaba Samuel Gompers. He's like, this is insane. Nobody part of the union, not an individual or organization would be held responsible for doing such a horrific thing and bombing such a big building and hurting and killing so many people. He even went to the prison and was sitting there with the JJ brothers. There's a natural picture. I'm going to add it here. And he said, no, they're innocent. What are you talking about? Like, they're my boys. Okay, back to the elections. Yes, to el otro. There was a man running for mayor. His name was Job Harriman. Okay, he was the defense attorney también. So he had the whole political background, like I said. And he was meant to be winning the whole election for mayor. Okay, this was the first time women were actually voting as well. So pretty much it looked like he had everybody's votes in his pocket. So then we have Daryl talking to Mr. Herringman. And he says, okay, look, let's just chop this up and come to an agreement. You and I know that the JJs did it, okay? The evidence is, he said his words, a mile wide. Like, they didn't cover anything, this and that. You know, at this point, they had already been digging the um, FBI investigator, Mr. William. So, había mucho against the JJ brothers. Not to mention the fact that it was their way of operating stuff just bombing everybody that wasn't with the union okay so daryl told harryman go ahead and continue running i will guarantee you will win you know i'm gonna tell them to go ahead and just admit to it you know they're gonna sit there and i did it because they're looking at getting hanged so instead of getting killed this and that blah 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 Okay, long story short, he went ahead and told the judge, gave him the conviction, yeah, they're guilty. So, yeah, it was all bad. Harryman lost because he did that on the eve of election. And he was upset because their deal was he would eventually have them admit to being guilty after he had won for mayor. The general that was in office at that time, Lewis, really wanted the J.J. brothers to be hung. He didn't want them. He didn't want to deal with them. He was like, they are done. They ended up sentencing um, J.B. to life in prison, where he actually died in San Quentin. And they only gave J.J. 15 years, which is kind of weird because he's the one that actually put the bomb out. And 
and um yeah a lot of the other bombings came up and they knew he was guilty but they didn't want to bother with it so whatever but um yeah once um jj came out he continued to do the whole pro iron working union stuff delegating this and that so yeah he continued to push for that so the original la time building was rebuilt in 1935 the same location in the corner of first street and broadway but they never worked out of this location ever again um, my thoughts are that maybe it was a building that you could see coming off the freeway on san mateo those are just my thoughts that's a really big facility as well it says la time so yeah um the original building um i believe it is registered like to be untouched something about mayor square location on spring street or something um i'm not quite sure what all that means but that's just what i think there is a huge memorial in hollywood forever cemetery there is pictures of that earlier when the you know they're showing the funerals and stuff and there's an updated picture now so if you guys are ever in that area stop by check it out it is to pay tribute to those people who lost their lives 17 to be exact anywhere from 20 to 26 people we are not sure if you guys want to read further into this situation in detail there is actually a book that was written by an old news anchor. His name is Lou Irwin, and the book is called Deadly Times. Like I said, he was a reporter and an anchorman, so he did write this book. It has way more detail than what I'm just briefly telling you guys. And yeah, that is what I wanted to bring a light to you guys today. Like I said, I am from LA and I never had a clue that this took place in history. This was actually known as the worst crime of the century. Like the worst in California, especially directed towards journalists. So yeah, big, big wow. All the photos that you guys see on the video are not mine. I do not own them. They're actually all part of the LA Times website. So I will give them all the credit. I'm just sharing them on here for visual and education purposes. Like always, guys, thank you for tuning in and spending your time with me. Keep watching because I will keep loading. We're doing 31 days of Halloween, so hopefully I get the 31 days for you guys. There's also another anniversary today of another devastating event that took place here in the area. But I will get back to you guys with that tomorrow, Monday. No quiero enfadar tanto. So, yeah, guys, that's what I have for you. You got it for me. La Comadre B. Have a good one. Los adoro.